Hey everyone, stick around to the end of the video to see a really special announcement about a new thing I'm bringing to the channel. Hello everyone, my name is Saul and welcome back to Games by Saul. For this video I'm doing a tutorial on how I set up my shader for the guildies which I use in my game Chrono Consort. This shader allows me to do a lot of things like creating random guildies by using one sprite, as you can see in the image in front of you. All it took me was a few was a bit of using the shader graph and I can do whatever I really want with this guildie and it's really useful and this will work for any sprite you want to use. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So as you can see here, I've got a, I've got a Unity project set up already. I'm using 2019.4.13 F1. You could probably use any Unity version, just make sure you can download the Unity Universal Render Pipeline or the University Lightweight Render Pipeline. To do that, you go to Window and Packet Manager. And then once they've all loaded in, look for a Lightweight Render Pipeline and click Install. That should take you a few seconds. Once that's finished, we need to create a render asset. So you go to right click anywhere in your inspector, create, you go to rendering, universal render pipeline, and we'll do a pipeline asset. So I've already created one, but we'll call this version two. Call it whatever makes sense for you. So you don't need to add this to your project. To do so, it's really simple. You go to edit, project settings. Once your project settings have appeared here, you can see in the graphics tab, there is a script for render pipeline settings. So you click on that and you add your render pipeline in. And there you go. You officially added your render pipeline in. And that's fantastic. That means you can now create shaders and see them in game. So we're gonna right click again, create a shader. And I went for an unlit graph shader. So we're gonna call it, call it whatever you want. I'm gonna call this sprite tutorial shader. So when you get into shader graph, it can be a little bit intimidating, but once you get the hang of it, it's really useful. So the first step is we need to create a texture that we can use for our sprite. I'm going to see what you do. What I did anyway was I created a property, texture2d. We'll call this main texture. And now these options are really important and it depends on what you want for your project. If you want to be able to change them in script, have it exposed and have the reference to something you'll rem remember. So I tend to call mine main text. If you want to access them in script, you need to access this reference. You can't access this name. So we'll drag you out. And now you need to it needs a default texture. So we're going to use our idle body. So we need to sample the texture. So you type it in, LOD texture two, plug it in, and there we go. But that doesn't look exactly right. That's because it doesn't really recognize the transparency of it. So what you can do is a really nice trick where you drag out from the alpha channel and you get one minus, and that will get rid of everything on the background. And there you go. And then what you want to do is quite simple. It's you want to subtract everything on the back, all the white from the main texture. So we do subtract plug this in and there we go we've got our human there so we'll drag that into color and we'll drag the alpha into the alpha plug it all in we click on main preview now and as you can see we've got this obviously if you want to change the sphere it's really easy you just change it to something that else that suits so i'm going to use a quad which is just a place so as you can see we've got it there great that's the first step done you can now access and change this in code or if you create more material so we'll go back to our game and as you can see, we've got this one here. So I'm going to create a new material. I'll call it Sprite. I'm going to call it Sprite. So again, call it what's relevant. So what you do is go to Shader, go to Shader Graphs, and then pick the shader you've just created. So Sprite underscore tutorial shader for this one. And there we go. So we've got a new material using that shader. So we'll go to our human here and we'll drag him in. So as you can see, it doesn't really like it because it doesn't know what it's doing. The reason for that is because I forgot to save like an idiot. So we'll save and then we'll see the properties pop up here. So then all you have to do then is just drag in a sprite. And there we go. And when you dragged in, you might have noticed this issue here with this random black box. To fix that, you have to go onto your sprite, onto your shader, go to the unlit master bit at the end, go to the cog and change some of these settings here. We want it two-sided and we want the surface to be transparent. So we click save again, go back into it. And there you go, that horrible border is now gone. So great, your first step's done. So let's start off simple. Let's say we want to change the clothing color. Well, that's really easy to do. So the way I set it up for my game, Chrono Consort, which if you're interested in, I did upload a video a few weeks back going over how I created these random AI for it using this shader itself. We're going to start with this sprite not having hair because it has the capability to add in hair. Another thing you can also do is add in sprite sheets and I'll show you how to do all of that once we've got the main bulk of the shader completed. So I'm not going to show you how to change every aspect of it. I'm going to show you how to change the clothing for example, and change the hair color. And then I'm pretty sure you'll be able to do the rest on your own. If you can't, you can obviously just comment down below and ask for more advice. So to do the share, the first step I do is we create another parameter of color. 
we'll call it shared color. And again, we'll change the reference to underscore shared color. Now what I tend to do here is for the default color, I just tend to get what I want the standard shirt color to be, which is that. So the jacket is something different and we can go on to how to do the jacket as well, actually, because it has an important factor about doing shading. So to do this, it's really simple the next step. I keep saying that, I know, but just bear with me. So you drag out from here again and you go to replace color and you plug this into the insect. So if I change, if I drag in shirt color now, and we change from this to this, it'll go to black. So then you click on this and you can choose whatever color you want it to be. It's, it works really nicely. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either have this shirt color be what you want it to change to and drag it in there, or you can have this be called something like shirt color original. And if you want to do it that method, I'd, I'd probably recommend don't have this exposed unless you really want to play around with it. For us, it doesn't really matter, so I'll just keep it exposed. We'll create another color called new shirt color. We'll drag this in here. We'll drag that to two. And then when we change the color here, as you can see, it changes it on the sprite itself. And it works just like that. So that's the shirt change, and that was really easy to do. So if, you, if you're gonna guess how we do the jacket, it's rather simple and it's pretty much the same way. Let's create another parameter. We'll call it jacket color. <laughs> and this time, we're not gonna create a new and original one. We'll just do how I usually do it for my shader itself. So now this jacket color will be what we want to change it to. So we drag out again, we do replace color, in. So first of all, click on the from and shift click on the color icon and then we just pick a color for it to change to. So we pick this one and as you can see it's changed to black but we'll fix that now by dragging in jacket color, plugging it in there and then we just change it here. So let's say we want it on the original one, that's how it looks. But again, you can just change it as and when you please. I tend to change it all on the material rather than in the shader just because I think it makes more sense to do that. For how to do shading, it's, it can be quite confusing, but once you have a basic grasp of how like colors work, you should be able to do it quite nicely. And if you're confident with software like Photoshop, again, you'll be able to do it because we'll be using blend modes. So to do the, sh the shading on the like arms, armpit area, we do another replace color, the from being the actual armpit area. And as you can see that it's changed to black, which is obviously not. So now what we want to do is we want to do a blend. So as you can see here, I created a blend node and we put in the jacket color into the base into the blend. And then we put it into the two. And as you can see, we get a similar result to how it looks there. And that's what we want. And then you change the mode to multiply because that's good for doing shadows. And then the opacity, it's more about playing around with it until you value that's right. I tend to find about 0.5 works quite well, but again, you can change it. And if you're wondering why we set up like this, well, if you change jacket color now, as you can see, the shading changes with it in a re and it looks perfect. Like that's how shade that's how it would be shaded, more or less. So that's one way of doing the shirts and jackets. I'm gonna show you another way, just because I think it's handy to know this way as well. So if you want the jacket to be based on the shirt colour, well we basically do the same as this. So we'll create another blend node, have that be the base, and this time we'll put the jacket colour as the blend. We want it to be another multiply. And again, it's just more about playing around with the value until you find a good opacity. We're going to do 0.5 again, because again, like I said, it just tends to work quite well. And we'll plug this into two. So as you can see, it's more or less the same. It could do with a little bit of tweaking, but again, you'll just find that on. And then the out from this will be our base for the jacket's shading. And as you can see, it works really nicely. So now if we change the shirt's color, as you can see, when we change the shirt's color, the jacket changes with it and the shading with that. So that way you can always have something that's matching. That's just how I did it for my game. You don't have to do it for yours. Do what suits you. So that's how we get our shirts done. So now we've got that. And all we have to do to see that in game is plug it back in to our color node here. We'll save the asset. We'll go back into our scene view. And as you can see, we've got it here. And our material has brand new parameters opened up to us. So shirt color original, I wouldn't mess with that unless you want to change that for some reason in the script. I just had the one shirt color. But again, like I said, it's up to you. So you can change the jacket color there if you want, but how we set it up, there's really no point. It won't do as much. It's probably more efficient just to change the shirt. And as you can see, it changes as well really nicely. Again, if you'd rather have the shirt and jacket be separate colors, you can do that easily enough. Just take off this bit here and plug jacket color back into base there. So now what happens if we want our player to have hair? Well, that's where it's up to you. You can you basically do the same thing as you did here. But if you want it to be a choice, I'm going to show you how to use a Boolean within Shader Graph, which is really useful as well. So first of all, let's set up getting the hair in the shader. 
to a clear another texture 2D, we'll call it hair texture. Now this method I'm showing you here, this would also work for clothing. If you wanted to have like different clothes for your characters, you could easily do that. Different like add-ons to your characters, easy to do that in the exact same method. So obviously it needs a texture now. So we'll drag in our hair texture to it. And basically what we do is we do the exact same we did here. So we'll just copy this. Now, one thing I'd like to point out as I'm working on this, this may not be the best method and you may know better methods. If you do, please let me know and comment down below. And while you're here, give the video a like, you may as well. It helps me out and helps YouTube see my videos. So as you can see, we've done the exact same thing here. We've got the hair texture, which looks completely messed up. We want minus it and we get this. And this one has highlights as well. So I'll show you how to mess with them. Let's say for now, we just want to combine the textures. Well, all you have to do is do you do another blend. And I tend to say the human body should be the base. So we'll do this. We'll drag in another blend. We'll get the base. You will drag in the hair to be the blend. And the mode you want to be on is overwrite. And as you can see, we've got that there. So the opacity, you're wondering why is that not working? Well, it's kind of confusing, but the way I do it is I just drag in the hair's opacity now. And there we go. The reason this works is because it gets all of this and then the body gets overwritten into the empty space there. So we combine our textures. So what's the next step? So first of all, we're going to create the boolean to say if they have hair or not. So you create a bool parameter, call it has hair. And again, we'll just, we'll call it underscore hair. And the default is obviously if you want it to be true or false when you create a new material with the shade. I'm going to put it on true. What we want to do is create a node. We'll, call, we'll create a branch node. And I'm also going to move this back. I think the one thing with shader graphs is they can get very messy. So be careful of that. You can organize things by hovering over them, selecting them all, right clicking and creating a group. And we'll call this group. Uh, body texture setup. We have our branch here. So we need a boolean to pass into that. So we'll pass that in there. And the thing I love about these branches is the true or false is a very versatile. So if you have hair, the truth is you want to pass in the combined. If you do not have hair, you want to pass in the uh, bold texture. And then we can pass this in over here. And as you can see, all these textures have hair now. But if we turn this off, they do not have hair, and that's how it works, and it's really useful. If you have hair, the preview texture gets messed up. As you can see, it's because it's using the alpha of the play, it's putting the hair on top of it, but it doesn't know where to put the rest of the hair because it has no data for that bit of the sprite. So what we'll do, come back to here. So we need to say, well, if you have hair, we want to pass in a different alpha. It actually just requires another bool, and it's really simple to use. So first of all, from the combined texture, we're going to do a... Sorry about that. So as I was working on this then, and as I was writing this up, I realized there's a much easier way to do that. Rather than having another Boolean, just get rid of that. What we need is to split out this into its channels, and we just get the alpha from that. And that's all you have to do to do the alpha for if it has hair or not. And it's really much easier than how I've been doing it. I'm pretty sure the less logic you have in these shaders, the better they run. So try and keep logic down if you can. So what we're going to do for the hair is I'm going to show you how to change the highlights on the hair. Obviously with the hair, I've made it so there's a shadow on the skin, but to do that, you'll just need to change the skin color and doing using this method, you can just change the shadow of it with the skin's tone, which is really easy. Using this, this method right here, the one we did for the jacket's shade. So we'll create another color. I'm gonna call it hair color. And just to keep things simple, I'm gonna use the method from before and just create this one. So again, we do a replace color. We go, we plug that into the in channel. So the from, again, we're gonna do from this hair color here. The default for the hair color parameter is just gonna be our normal hair color. So we'll plug it in to hair color. And there we go. If I change it here, like I said before, the hair colors will change. But again, change that in the material. It just makes more sense. But once we want the highlight on it, well, the highlight gets a little bit different. Highlights, you wanna basically make it white, but add a little bit of color to it. This just makes it a better color to actually modify. I will admit, I'm not the best when it comes to colors, but to my basic understanding, this is why you do it. If you plug it in and if we change all these values to one, and as you can see, we've got a nice white now, and it just looks white, but when you add it in with the blend, it tends to work out really well. So we're gonna blend. You are gonna be the blend value, and our hair color will be the base. So you, as you can see, overlay looks really ridiculous. So what you want to do is go to linear dodge as that tends to be the best type of blend mode for doing highlights again mess around with opacity as you see fit but we'll get another replace color plug that into the in the from is going to be the highlights on the hair so 
so we'll select that. And as you can see, it's just gone to black. But as soon as you plug this in, we have highlights. And again, mess around with your opacity to see what suits you. I tend to find about 0.1 works quite well. And finally, we're going to plug it in, save the asset, and there we go. And that's how you basically set up the simple shader for changing the shirt colour, changing the jacket with that, changing the jacket shadow, and changing the hair colour and the highlight of the hair. And also giving you the option if you want hair. And like I said, this could be for any sprite. It doesn't have to be a human. You could have an animal and you could choose if you want antlers or not. And quite easily, you could have the antlers act as the hair in this shader. And I'm going to show you what we've got from that. So as you can see, we've got this mess here. That's because we need to have a hair texture. So I will plug in the hair here. And there we go, we're back. If I turn off has hair, it gets rid of his hair. So then when we've got the hair colour, we can change it however we want. And like I said, skin colour and doing the rest is literally just the same as you've been doing. You'll play around and you'll realise there's a lot you can do with this. Now, I did say I'd show you what happens if you put a sprite sheet in. Well, let's do that. So you put a sprite sheet in, and as you can see, it's a little bit weird. But we put the hair sprite sheet in as well. It's still weird. You're thinking, why is that? That's because this sprite here has to be changed to one of them. So we go to human underscore one underscore idle underscore zero, plug you in. And as you can see, that's worked quite well. If we plug another one in, it's changed. So the way the shader works is it will keep the animations of the sprite sheet in there for you and it knows exactly what to do. So if we made an animation from that, the sprite sheet would change it perfectly for you. And in fact, we'll do that just now. As you can see, the sprite is animating and all the animations are playing as they should. And like I said, if we just pause quickly, we go on the sprite itself and we change some of these values. Let's change the shirt colour. We'll go for a nicer like purple colour there and we'll choose the hair to green. Yeah, that looks good. We'll play again. And as you can see, all the relevant sprites have changed. Again, we can just turn off hair if we don't want to use it. And like I said, all the sprites will be adjusted to show that fact. And that's basically how this shader works. The reason I didn't show how to do the jeans or the shoes or the skin tone is just because it's pretty much me repeating myself and showing you exactly what to do. If you're interested to see how that shader looks fully, this is what my final shader looks like. I'll actually have to change some of it now because I found that better method to do the logic. But as you can see, we change the skin tone here. We change all this here. Change the pants color, shoe color, hair color and highlights and we plug it back in. If anyone would like this asset, just let me know and I could probably share it because it's quite, it's probably better to look at it yourself as you learn. But that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Hopefully it's not gone on too long, but hopefully you found it really useful. If you'd be able to like it and share it out, I'd really appreciate it. Comment down below what kind of stuff you're going to use this to create. And if you have any other questions about the shader, again, comment down below and just let me know. Right, thank you everyone for watching. I hope this tutorial came in useful. I don't tend to do too many tutorials, so sorry if it came off a little bit weird, but you know, I tend to do devlogs. And talk now about devlogs, next week there'll be a brand new devlog on my game, Chrono Console. Maybe subscribe and check out, and thank you for watching. Goodbye. So you stuck around? Fantastic. I've introduced a Discord, Discord by Soul. There'll be a link down below. Make sure you join, chill out with all of us, and we'll just all have a good time talking game dev and other topics. So just come out and chill. All right, thank you for watching and bye.